Hi my angels and welcome back to my channel. It's Koshal here. It's been a very, very long time since I last posted on my channel, or at least that I last posted quite consistently. I have been quite active over on Instagram, but not so much on my YouTube channel and that's because I was taking a bit of a break. I just felt like as soon as I got married, there were just so many things going on and I just felt like I wasn't in the right headspace to be putting myself onto YouTube but I am back and I wanted to kickstart all of my content with obviously all of my wedding stuff and I know this has been a very very long time coming and I wanted to do my first video as my Q&A video but I actually thought why not like rewind a little bit and just tell you guys how we structured our wedding and just like all the events that took place and the themes that we had and all of that so before I do my Q&A I thought I would just sit and just like do my makeup and have a bit of a story time chit chat kind of makeup video. <laughs> if you guys want to know like my part one of my wedding series then yeah this is the place to be. <laughs> so I'm gonna just start doing my makeup but I'm not gonna really show you guys the products that I'm using and like what I'm doing but I will list everything that I've used in the info box below but this is pretty much my go-to makeup of the moment. I have switched out the odd product here and there, which I will mention in the info box so you guys know. I guess I wanna start off with kind of setting the scene as obviously all of our guests were flying from, mainly from the UK. The first thing we actually did was we organized a coach for all of our family who live quite locally to us to get to the airport. Everyone flew from Gatwick Airport, which is quite far from us, but um, we wanted to make sure that all of our guests got like a good deal um, when it came to actually like paying for their tickets because we knew that doing a wedding abroad, our guests were gonna have to obviously pay for their flights and things out there. We basically, kept all of our guests up to date when there was any deals on and everyone pretty much booked through British Airways because they had like the best deals. So we had about, I wanna say like 70 to 80% of our guests traveling on that coach all the way to Gatwick. Um, and we missed out on that fun because we were already in Mexico. So we actually arrived about three days beforehand to kind of make sure everything was like prepped and everything was ready to go. So there were quite a few long days. We thought we'd get to relax for a bit, but we really didn't, but that's okay. So whilst we were obviously like prepping away and planning away in Mexico, we had all of our guests come out a couple of days later. So just to put things into context, we flew out on Friday and then all of our guests flew out on Monday. So there were a few days which we had to kind of like catch up on things back in Mexico. We wanted to make sure that we had like little things planned for everyone throughout like the wedding and little surprises here and there. So the first thing we had was when everyone was in the plane and the plane had took off and everyone was just chilling. Um, it was my cousin's job to give everyone a kind of welcome pack on the plane. So in this welcome pack, we had a little note from myself and my husband. We had a little eye mask so everyone could get hopefully a bit of shut eye because the jet lag is quite bad because it's eight hours or five hours behind. So by the time it's like nine o'clock, you're like dead sleepy in Mexico. So we wanted to make sure people were aware that if they got a lot of sleep in on the plane, they wouldn't feel so bad getting into Mexico and kind of adjusting to the time there. And then um, there was also a really, really lovely um, hydration like luminous mask from Tarcha. Tarcha kindly, kindly, kindly gifted everyone a kind of sheet mask to have on the plane. So everyone was like doing their sheet mask, getting all luminous and getting their skin all glammed up and ready for the week ahead. So that was the little kind of surprise that we had for everyone on the plane. And I think everyone really enjoyed it. We did see some funny pictures of a lot of our guests with the masks on. And that was really quite funny for us to kind of see pictures of and like behind the scenes of, which was quite cute. So I think that is everything when it comes to like the plane journey. We did actually organize a coach from the Cancun airport to our resort. We wanted to make sure that the resort that we picked wasn't too far from the airport because we know that like an 11 hour flight is a long flight to take and we didn't want then all of our guests to be like, oh great, like another hour still left to go to get to the resort. So our resort was actually about I want to say like 10-15 minutes away from the airport so it's a really nice quick journey for all of our guests to kind of check into the hotel and then relax and just carry on with their holiday. One thing I would like to say is that the resort that we had our wedding at which was Dreams Riviera Cancun Resort and Spa actually went above and beyond for us in every single like event that we had organized. So it started off with like our check-in system. We wanted kind of a private area for all of our guests to check in because there was about 70 odd people checking in on that 
that day. Everyone arrived at around about four, five o'clock. There were two coaches, load of people that were coming and they actually set up this area really private to the rest of the check-in area and they set up all these tables. Everyone was kind of pre-checked in. They just had to collect their kind of like check-in like documents and we also made up some hangover kits for everyone to take away with them in their rooms and that they could pick up there as well. So I'll list everything that we had in the hangover kits in the info box below but I had my family and my cousin kind of help put that all together. So we actually flew out, um, me and my husband flew out earlier with my mum, my brother, my sister-in-law, my two nephews and my cousin. So there was eight of us and actually nine of us in total with our wedding planner. So all nine of us flew out on that Friday which meant we were there for that weekend and they all helped out with putting these like hangover kits together. I will list um, exactly what we had in the hangover kits below and also a link to where we bought the hangover kits as well because I wanted something quite like big, nothing too small. But I We'll leave a list of everything that we had in there for you guys and I'll also probably put exactly where we got everything from because we tried to get things from like the pound store and things like that just so that we could save on our overall budget. That's what everyone got greeted with um, and obviously there was all of us there, all nine of us who were there beforehand. I actually wore a red outfit, a red dress from ASOS because I wasn't wearing any red for any of my other events and red is a very kind of synonymous colour for an Indian bride. So I had red lips, beachy wavy hair and this gorgeous like red ASOS dress. I just wanted to be really comfortable and that's yeah what I wore. So as everyone was checking in they actually set up the bar area at the back which they set up with a whole spread of snacks and foods and drinks for everyone. So we thought people were just going to kind of check in and then get their stuff and then go straight to their rooms but they really didn't everyone just sat and chilled and we got to speak to everyone and we got to make sure everyone was okay but I've got to say that the resort staff helped so much with every little thing that we didn't really have to worry much apart from obviously making sure like we were doing like the hosting things so we all just had a little bit of food and yeah that was like the first event which wasn't really supposed to be an event but it turned into being an event so that was the first thing out um, of the way and then Gonna make sure I'm like doing my makeup. I feel like I'm forgetting to do my makeup as I'm talking. But then once that was over, that was the Monday, the whole of Tuesday, everyone had free. They could pretty much do what they wanted to because um, we wanted to make sure that we weren't taking up too much time of our guests. So everyone had a pretty chilled out day and on Tuesday evening we had a welcome drinks kind of event. So for this welcome drinks we wanted to basically formally welcome everyone to Mexico and to our wedding week. And it sounds really silly that it's a wedding week but everyone was there for a week because that's I believe like the minimum amount of time that you can spend when you do like an all-inclusive um, holiday. Just to backtrack I don't think I actually mentioned but the resort that everyone stayed at was all-inclusive which basically means that all of our guests, whilst they were there, outside of anything to do with the wedding, all of their food was paid for, all of their drinks were paid for, basically they didn't have to like fork out a single penny whilst they were there, unless they wanted to give tips to any of the waiters and staff that were there, they didn't have to like turn around and be like, I'll get this round or I'll get this meal, everything was paid for. Anything to do with the wedding was an additional cost from myself and my husband. So that's not included. We thought, oh, an all-inclusive resort means that all the food and the drink will be free for the, like all the wedding events. That is not the case. You actually have to pay for everything on top because it's separate from staying at the resort. So yeah, so the welcome drinks was basically a few nibbles. We told our guests to have dinner um, and then pop over for some drinks. And this is where we basically formally kind of welcomed everyone. My husband did a really lovely speech, just kind of welcoming everyone and thanking them for being there at such an amazing big like moment for us in our lives. It was supposed to be really, really chilled out and just really cash, but I'm not gonna lie, it did turn into a bit of a rave. If any of you follow me on my Instagram, then you would have seen how um, we, it was like a mini reception <laughs> on that night because I uploaded some like stories onto my Instagram of like when we were all like partying away that first night. And that was probably one of my favorite nights because it was so like not planned for it to turn into like a full on party but everyone had such an amazing time. So we had that from 
seven till about 10. So it was only a few hours, but it was where everyone could just chill and mingle and just speak to everyone. Cause obviously being on a plane and speaking and well, getting to know like the other side of the family. So like the groom side, getting to know the bride side and the bride side, getting to know the groom side. It's hard to do that on a plane. So we wanted something really informal and really like just chilled out and Obviously, it turned into a bit of a party. But I want to mention to you guys what I wore. And I actually wore an Asta Narang Lenga. It was a white, well, off-white. I want to say it was almost like a cream shade um, Lenga. And it was so stunning. I have never been so, like, comfortable in a Lenga before. And after wearing that one piece, I definitely, definitely want to get some more. And I got that outfit from Estee Couture in London. And highly, highly, highly recommend to go there to see if there is anything that um, you guys want to get. It doesn't have to necessarily be for like your wedding, but they have some stunning, stunning designers there. And Ash, who owns the place, is honestly, she will go above and beyond to like help you out. And that's what I love about that. It's customer service there was just incredible. So I will leave a link to Estee Couture in the info box below. So that's what I wore. My hair was in a really high, sleek, like, back pony. Um, I did have extensions in my hair because my hairdresser and also my really good friend Nikki, who she wasn't supposed to be my hairdresser for the wedding, but she was like, this is my gift to you. And the amount of times I said to her, I don't want you to do it. And she was like, don't be silly. Like, obviously I'm going to do it. But um, yeah, she did my hair just really slicked back um, and a really thick like pony. But she said to put extensions into my hair because it's going to help with hairstyles. It's just going to help everything look a little bit more glamorous. And it also would cut out on time for like putting extensions into my hair like clip-ons so I had tape and extensions put in and I really loved them my head did feel like heavy like I was like doing this the whole time because the hair was just so thick and long it just added a little bit more volume it didn't really add much length because my hair actually is pretty long but um yeah so that was the welcome drinks so that ended at around 10 30 and oh just to backtrack a little bit we had DJ Envy from Toronto come and DJ for us. So we actually found him through my sister-in-law. She was watching Manny Jassel's Instagram videos and she was listening to his mixtape in the background and must have tagged him or something. And then my sister-in-law sent that to my husband and was like, check this DJ out, he seems really good. And basically the rest was history because we ended up booking him and he was incredible. He got like the party started and it wasn't until like that welcome drinks that we realized it's just gonna be a week of raving. So that was basically the welcome drinks. We honestly had such an amazing time. This was like one of the days where like all of my girls side, like all of my cousins and my friends got to know the boys sides, cousins and friends. So it was really honestly such a fun night. I will try and include some clips of my Instagram stories in here somewhere to show you just how much of a rave it was because honestly we had the best best time. Location wise, we had this in their um, kind of like terrace area. They have like this outdoor area right next to their bar. And we basically rented that area out for the night. We had that for like three or four hours exclusively just for us. And then it was open to the public. And after that, pretty much people just went on to do their own thing. If they wanted to go and have a late dinner, they could. They A lot of them actually chilled with us in the lobby. I know my mom and all of them kind of went home because the jet lag was quite a, um, quite a tough one. But that was like officially like the first event. And then we move on to the second event. So the second event was the Mendy. So I had to wake up super, super, super early for the Mendy because I was obviously getting like my hands and my feet done. So I was up at, I want to say five o'clock and I was up and ready like I'm talking makeup done hair wasn't like done done but I was only having a plait put in which um Nikki did for me a little bit later but I was full-on ready at five o'clock and I sat and probably snoozed a bit as well um and had my Mendy done so my Mendy was done by Hannah by Divya who is probably one of the sweetest people that I've met this year she is honestly 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 the most kind and like like you just get this really lovely warm energy from her and I've got to say me and my husband have found like true friends in a lot of the uh, suppliers that we ended up using for our wedding. DJ Envy obviously being one of them we were actually in Toronto with him a couple of weekends ago and 
Vivian and Smith. And in fact, if anyone lives in or around the Toronto area or in kind of Canada, I would highly recommend to check out Vivian. I'm going to leave her details as well below because her henna is so clean. I don't know how she does it. Like I was watching her doing it as well. And I was like, how do you do this? And I just gave her full reign. I was like, just do what you want. Um, and she created the most beautiful Mendy design for me. And I was so sad when it was fading away because it's like that feeling of like you're actually getting married is when you get your henna done. It was for me anyways, but it was, yeah, it was an amazing time. But we actually had our henna in our suite. So we had um, a suite at the resort. Um, this meant that we had a really big like living room, kitchen, dining kind of area. We had a team come in and kind of move all the furniture out and set up a really beautiful kind of area of loads of like fruit and snacks just so that everyone who came we could have some something to nibble on um i can't actually remember what i ate i think my happy actually fed me like a sandwich whilst i was getting my henna done but this was a very very chilled out event so it was in our suite we invited all the ladies um from both the boys and the girls side over to our room and we just had music playing on in the background everyone just started getting up and dancing everyone was getting henna done we actually used a henna company in Mexico as well. They did all of the guests henna and then Divya did all of like the immediate ladies in the family. So she did all of our henna and um, the color as well. Like I didn't even keep it on for 12 hours, I don't think, because um, it kind of like wiped away. But the color was so, so, so dark. And the henna that she gets is, I believe, sourced from Rajasthan. So it's very, very natural. There's no chemicals in it. And the fact that it went so dark, and even she was like, wow, you've not even kept it on for that long. And I'll tell you later on why it got wiped away with water. But um, yeah, it got wiped away and still the color was so, so, so dark. I mean, I'm gonna put it down to my husband loving me so much. <laughs> but um, yeah, her henna was beautiful. It didn't really have like much of a henna smell to it either. Um, but yeah, so she did the henna and it was such a chilled out day. We had an amazing team of videographers and photographers taking pictures and videos throughout our events, um, which I again will share. I did actually put a two or three minute video up of our wedding on my channel already so I'll leave a link to it as well so you guys can watch that in case you haven't done so already. So yeah the henna was from I believe it was from 10 till 1 but yeah it was a very kind of like casual thing it wasn't like you had to be there but everyone turned up and that was so 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 lovely of them. We also did give everyone a really beautiful floral um, and pearl tikka to wear um, which I got from Mari Floral and that was just like a cute little gift to give to all the ladies there that came and had their heather done. So that that was another thing that we did. I'm trying to make sure that I'm not forgetting anything because I feel like this is going to happen and I'm just going to forget things. But that was uh, the henna. So it wasn't like a super long event. It was a very kind of short and sweet event. But one thing that I wanted to make sure was I didn't want to have my Mendy put on at a Mendy function in the evening because that would have meant I wouldn't really have been able to enjoy myself. Like I wouldn't have been able to dance and eat and just be free. I would have felt like someone would have had to like feed me and someone would have had to help me do everything. So I made sure that we had a separate henna event, which was outside of anything else. But this was super cash. Like we basically said to everyone, like you can come in either simple Indian clothes, you can come in like daytime, like summer dresses. So we had like a mixture of everything. People just kind of did their own thing and just kind of came and just really enjoyed themselves. For the Mendy, I wore a House of Masaba outfit, a beautiful, beautiful green skirt, green blouse, and a hot neon pink, the Buddha. And I wanted to make sure I was wearing quite darker colors because I didn't want my henna to by accident get on something that was cream or white or just like a color that I knew would stain. So I wanted to make sure I was wearing green, which I ticked off the list. And as soon as I saw that piece in Este Couture, I was like, that is my henna outfit. I just knew there and then. I did have my husband's name in my henna and he did take ages to find it because Divya was really, really good and she hid it really well. So I did have like the odd, like little traditional thing here and there in all of the events. So that was the henna. I'm pretty sure I'm not forgetting anything. Um, If I am, I will list everything in the info box as well. So I'll like list 
the order of events and kind of what happened. So once the henna was over, this was on the Wednesday. So the welcome drinks was on the Tuesday evening and this is the Wednesday. So Wednesday morning, afternoon, we had the henna and then that evening we had, we didn't really want a sangeet. I wouldn't have minded having a sangeet, but my husband was like, we're in Mexico. Why not do like a fiesta? Like throw a party which has Spanish music and just kind of really get one with the culture because we were there with amazing Mexican food we were there with the amazing Mexican tequila and the fact that we were in a completely different country we thought why not soak in that culture why not soak in the food why not soak in the music the drink just everything so we had a fiesta that Wednesday night so this was where we had like piñatas we had a tequila station we had a margarita station we had all these huts which were serving all these different kinds of amazing food we had, I think we had two huts of just doing like desserts so we had like a full spread of food we had these gorgeous like wooden tables with really colorful centerpieces running along through them and luckily we could make the space work so that everyone had a seat which was really nice so our suite actually had stairs to go down and then the event was right there so we did a mini little entrance i actually wore a custom designed the Solanke outfit. It was a lime green outfit. The skirt had 52 meters of fabric. It was huge, fluffy, and light, but it was quite a warm day. There was a storm brewing outside, and I was quite hot by the end of it, and I did have a bit of an outfit change. But once DJ MV announced that we were arriving, we walked basically down our little steps that we had from our suite and walked straight onto the dance floor and had a bit of a boogie, and everyone came onto the dance floor, and everyone started dancing, and it was just such a lovely like feeling like I suppose you can't really describe the feeling you get at your own wedding because it's such like an emotional thing but I was so happy and I was on cloud nine the whole time cloud nine cloud seven I don't know what number it is but you know what I mean like I was just so happy the whole time basically that night was the night that I felt we all became one big family. So everyone was dancing and then we actually had a mariachi band come out and they were playing some live music. They were there for about half an hour and it was amazing. And they were playing whilst everyone started to get food and started eating. And then we pretty much just partied the night away. What I loved about that night was in the distance you could see thunder and lightning. Like we knew it was gonna rain that night. But we still partied. I actually did a surprise dance with all the girls. It was so funny because my husband and I had planned a water drum show. So we knew that was a surprise for all of our guests. So when we sat down, Envy announced that there was a surprise happening. So could everyone take their seats and be quiet and da 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 da. So whilst we were sitting, my husband's favorite Bollywood song started playing. And I was sitting there going, oh my God, why is your song playing? Like what's going on? And as soon as that beat dropped and our dance started, I got up to get ready to do the dance and he, bless him, got up with me and I was like, no, 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 you sit. This is a surprise for you and that literally blew him away because I can't keep surprises to save my life. Like, I'm the worst at keeping surprises. I can't, like, I can't do it to save my life. Like, I'm the worst person at lying. Like, I, I just can't do it. So the fact that we kept that a secret was brilliant all the girls that were in the dance so i had all of my friends all my cousins my sister-in-laws like everyone was in the dance and we all practiced it all together for the first time after the henna was over so we made sure that everyone had left the room and that's when we were all doing it together because before that we were all learning it separately from like a video that we sent on our whatsapp group it was such an amazing dance we all had these gorgeous flower crowns which we got from primark and we yeah we did this dance and he had no idea and even till this day he always says like I can't believe like you did a dance and I can't believe you surprised me and I was like I know I was pretty good at that <laughs> so for everyone who doesn't know me from like when I was younger I used to love doing Indian dances I used to be that person who would go to someone's wedding and take my like CD with me of my dance and be like play track two that's the dance that I'm doing like I used to be that person <laughs> and I haven't danced like forever so I wanted to make sure that um, I danced at my own wedding if you know what I mean so the song that we actually danced to I'll leave a list to we actually mixed all the songs together that was the secret dance and as the storm was getting closer and closer I actually went to go and change my clothes because I was so hot and it was getting really sticky so I went to go and change my clothes which was obviously just up the stairs right behind us and by the time I got out everyone was moving inside and I was like oh my god what's going on so this is when 
rain was coming and we had to make sure all the electrical equipment was away. So the events team organized all of that to be taken into their Mexican restaurant. So this resort has like loads of different restaurants and different themed restaurants. And one of them was a Mexican themed restaurant. So we moved the whole party inside. It was around 10 o'clock at this point or like quarter to 10. So a lot of people did head back to their rooms or like got changed and just chilled out. But a lot of us like youngsters went back and partied there. So we partied there till about 11.30. 30 I want to say and we again had such an amazing time like we were just jumping around dancing and it was just such a moment of where I felt like this is like my family like we'd literally become one big family out of all of the events that we had I think the fiesta has to be my favorite event that we had because it was just so much I just felt like there was so much love there and everyone was so happy and we obviously had all those surprises so sorry so backtrack a little bit more we did have a water drum show as soon as our dance was finished so it's where there's these big drums there's like a constant flow of water on the, the top layer of the drum and we had these two guys come and they basically like were doing this incredible show there was like lights everywhere water was flying everywhere this is where they got everyone involved as well so my husband and I went up and that's when all my mendy kind of came off because the sticks were like wet and everything was just so wet there um so yeah that's the reason why I had to take my mendy off very 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 quickly after having it done and then they basically got the rest of all of our guests involved so both of our mums went up our like friends and cousins and just everyone just went up our aunties and uncles like everyone got involved and it was so much fun so yeah so the fiesta night we played a mixture of either spanish or english songs so it was a very different thing for us to do because we were like yeah let's play spanish music we love spanish music but we obviously didn't know whether or not like our families would like enjoy it but everyone had such a good time so yeah the fiesta got moved inside um again it's all on my wedding's highlight reel highlight reel highlight thing on instagram so if you guys want to go and check that out then please feel free to because um you'll get to see it like in like in the flesh almost if you know what i mean so um that was a fiesta that ended at around 11 11 30 and then one thing that we would always do was we would go and chill in the lobby and just like relax and hang out with everyone after every single evening so that's what we did then we had our mandor the next day so the mandor is basically like a pre religious ceremony that you do before the actual wedding we had our manvo at 11 o'clock in the morning and our bt followed by it straight after so the bt is basically the holy ceremony or the turmeric ceremony whatever you want to call it the mandor we basically did together so it's a very different thing for um us to do because generally the girls mandor and the boys mandor is done separately but we actually sat side by side and had both of our families on each side and we just did it together because we didn't want to waste too much time of our guests time if you know what I mean because everyone was there still to enjoy a holiday as well as a wedding so we wanted to have a nice mix so that was a, an optional event to attend but pretty much everyone came the resort had organized a beautiful spread of like pastries and fruits and like breakfast and teas and coffees and everything for everyone whilst everyone sat and watched the mandra happen we wanted it to be super 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 quick so we actually had our priest fly out from san diego and he did our mandra ceremony as well as our wedding ceremony and this is the creepiest thing ever so my brother got married in california about 15 years ago our priest was caucasian and my brother's priest in california where he got married was also caucasian so they had basically started practicing hinduism and they both ended up being priests the funniest thing was my aunt sat there so my dad's sister she was like he looks so familiar i think he got your brother married i was like no but he doesn't live where we were so um she was like i'm gonna go and ask him i was like yeah go and ask him and let me know what he says so my aunt went and asked him she came back and she was like you never guess what we were like what she goes his brother got your brother married and we were like what like that was honestly like we picked our priest his name was Thermosetu. we picked him because we found him online we knew that he traveled to mexico for weddings and he had a really really lovely like youtube video where he's kind of talking and he's talking about like the different types of weddings that he's done and we found like we connected with that so that's the reason why we picked him not in a million years would we have thought that his brother got my brother married so that was like a really weird crazy crazy thing that happened but yeah so we had our mandal which was really short and simple we said to the priest we want it to be done like the quickest possible because it's not the most like funnest events if you know what i mean but it is a religious event which our mums kind of said like well 
it kind of needs to be done. If you're doing an Indian wedding, you kind of have to do this bit. So we had our mandal and then we did our bitty straight after. So my husband went first and literally looked like a Simpson. We both looked like Simpsons at the end of it because our entire bodies were covered with our turmeric. So we didn't actually use real turmeric because we've heard loads of nightmare stories about it breaking people out and not reacting with their skin properly and staining their skin and all sorts. And also, some people, like, it stains their skin and we didn't want that. So we actually opted for using a Kiehl's turmeric and cranberry mask. So this we both used, like, in our spare time and we know that it's not caused any issues in our skin. And we thought, why not use that? We were almost getting kind of like a spa experience from it because it was getting put all over us. But our skin felt and looked amazing after. So highly recommend it to anyone who is looking to not go down the real turmeric route because it can obviously cause issues um, depending on how sensitive your skin is but um highly recommend it we went through about i want to say about four pots maybe three or four pots we thought we'd go through a lot more but we actually did pretty well in that sense but we were still covered head to toe because it's quite thick in consistency i feel like a little went a long way. That was our mandra and bitty. I'm trying to see if there's anything else that we did differently in that. Obviously, we both did it together, which was really lovely. I thought it was really nice because it meant that the boy side and the girl side could be there at the whole thing rather than the boy side being completely separate to the girl side. Um, so this was done in an area which is called their chef's garden. It's a, basically a new like restaurant. It's like a casual dining um, dinner area. So we had that whole kind of area for us for that time and it was fun. Like it, I'm not gonna lie, it was, I was a little bit scared. <laughs> I got the turmeric mask in my ear and I literally could hear ringing for like two months afterwards, which was not good, but it's gone now. I feel like everything's back to normal now oh where is my mascara okay got my mascara and now i've forgotten where i was yeah bitty and mandel it was like a really short thing we didn't want it to be a long thing everyone still had loads of fun in the end of it and the resort went again above and beyond just to have like all these amazing snacks and food and drink for everyone my mom actually taught the chef how to make masala chai so for the duration that we were there at this resort they had masala chai every morning for all of our guests and they also served masala chai every single event that we had um because us indians we like our masala chai so that was one thing that we had as a little extra for all of our guests as well and once that was over it was a free day so that was in the morning it started at 11 ish and it finished by like 12.31. So everyone had the rest of the day to relax, chill out, go to the pool, do whatever you want really. So that was the Thursday and the Friday was the day of the wedding. So we actually did our legal wedding that Friday morning. I was in like a new look dress, just a white like summer dress. I think my husband came in like just summer shorts and a t-shirt like it was so casual and the resort again just set up this area by this Mayan tree which actually brings good luck we set up camp there they had a beautiful like table with like candles and flowers there we had our registrar like the guy who got us married as well as our two witnesses from each side so we both had our mums and one sibling each and it was genuinely a very quick and simple like legal ceremony that we did because the Indian wedding was just a symbolic ceremony so um, yeah, that's when we actually legally got married. So the 1st of June is our marriage date. And funnily enough, my brother's legal wedding day is the same. So it's so weird, like all this stuff that happened and we found out during the wedding, it was just crazy. So yeah, we went and did that and then had breakfast together. And then I went back to the suite. My husband actually got given a separate suite the night before. So he went and got ready separately. I got ready separately. It was such a chilled out get ready if you know what I mean I did my makeup so quickly I just basically did my makeup like this like really simple nothing crazy my cousin got my mom ready I did my makeup Nikki did my hair in this beautiful beautiful hairstyle before I knew it I was walking up the stairs to this new area that they had in the resort which was basically um like a rooftop area which overlooked the sea and before I knew it, I was like walking up the stairs up to that area to get married. And it was just, that day went so quickly. It seems like a dream, but I know it was real because obviously all the pictures and the videos were there. <laughs> but it just went so, oh, oh, why do I do this to myself? Oh, I keep doing this. I keep forgetting to tell you guys. 
my outfits. So for the mandal and the bitty, for the mandal, I wore a House of Masaba outfit. Um, it was a navy blue skirt and a mustard top, um, which had like floaty sleeves and it was just really different. And again, I love that. It's so comfortable to wear. So I wore that for the mandal portion and then I changed into a mustard colored jumpsuit from New Look afterwards because I knew that was just going to get completely covered. Um, so I changed into that because I didn't want to ruin my other outfit. And for my jewellery I wore like fake flower jewellery and it was from Mari Floral as well. I actually wore a dicker and earrings from Mari Floral for the Mendy as well. Um, so I had like a bit of a floral theme going on in my jewellery. Um, so yeah that's what I wore then. But for the wedding I wore a another beautiful custom made outfit from Egg Thessaloniki. I actually went for pastels because I just knew I didn't want to wear red. I'm, I don't like wearing red very often and especially not in Indian clothes. I'm just not drawn to it. And obviously being in a different country like near a beach I just knew I wanted to go down the pastels route. We were actually planning this outfit as soon as we got engaged. So we had been planning this outfit for two years. To keep that a secret was a very, very big thing for me. I actually kept a secret from quite a lot of people. I did show like little sneak peeks to like my cousins and my family. Well, some of my cousins helped me pack stuff, so they saw it then, but not on me, if you know what I mean. So yeah, I went down the pastel theme and absolutely love my outfit. So the next thing I wanna do is I actually want to change my wedding outfit into outfits that I can wear now. Maybe I'll actually vlog that, like, where I'm upcycling my wedding outfit because I want to make the blouse into a sari so I want to have a sari made to match the blouse. I want to have the skirt put changed into an anagali. I want the dupatta to be made to wear as maybe one simple lenga because I've got two dupattas and the other dupatta to wear with a um, like anarkali or juridar or something like that so maybe i'll vlog the whole experience of how that works i'll speak to ekthar and see if there's something that we can do so i can show you like the behind the scenes because i think that'll be really cool that outfit had hundreds and hundreds of hours worth of work because everything was done by hand so i know ekthar slanky is quite on the premium end of things but it's so worth the money her like quality is second to none like i've not seen anything that clean like there were no threads everywhere everything was super clean everything was so beautifully done highly 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 recommend loved my wedding outfit i had all of my draping pre-done so i actually had that done by amir navid who did my hair for my sagai he actually helped me pin everything all i had to do was put my blouse on because everything was pinned already onto my blouse and I just had to put the dupatta on my head. Like literally that's all we had to do. So that saved a heck of a lot of time because I knew everyone else wanted to get glammed up and get ready and I didn't want to feel like everyone had to be in my room to help me do things. So um, yeah, we had a lot of stuff um, like pre-done to help us with... Um, like to help us on the day, if you know what I mean. The wedding went super quick. So my husband walked in to a custom beat, which was made by DJ MV. So I had my uncle and my brother, and then my nephew and my brother-in-law um, walk me down the aisle. And the song that I walked down to was Tere Bin Ne Lagda, which is by Amran Malik. And it's such a beautiful, beautiful song. And it just went so nicely with like the whole look and feel of the wedding. The theme that we had for this event was a very kind of see-through. So everyone was sitting on acrylic chairs. Our whole mandap was acrylic. So you could see right through it. And then it was almost like we had floating flowers right at the top. We had a mixture of real and silk flowers because we wanted to save costs because real flowers are very expensive and silk flowers are not so expensive. So we had a mixture of both. The wedding actually finished quite early. We had estimated that it would go on for like X amount of time, but it finished super early. So what we did was we told our guests to go back to their rooms. They could freshen up if they wanted to, or they could chill by the pool. Like they could literally do whatever they wanted and then to meet at a certain spot for canapes before the dinner started. So we had a lot of our guests, like my mum changed into a different outfit in the end. And it was such like a nice, like casual thing to do. And it made everything less formal, which is what we wanted. We didn't want everything to be like 
super duper formal. We just wanted to make sure everyone had a really good time. So a lot of people went back to their rooms, got changed. A lot of people actually stayed in their outfits. Some people changed into like dresses and we had a little bit of a mini photo shoot. I took my the butt dart off and then we were ready for the dinner. Um, I don't think I mentioned, but our floral hars were made by Mari Floral as well. We actually took them with us because we didn't want real flowers because we knew that they would wilt in the, the heat and the sweat and all of that. So we had um, fake flowers, which looked really real and they complemented our outfits so beautifully and my jewelry and my husband's necklace um was from red dot jewels i'm yet to go into their store because i'm obsessed with their jewelry so i'm really excited to do that hopefully this year i can go and check out some of their stuff because i really love their jewelry that they do so that's the jewelry that i wore and i also had some flowers put into my hair and those false flowers were also from mari floral as well so we actually gave all of the women a selection of flowers to put in their hair, all fake flowers. And um, both of our mums, we had Mari Floral um, Sauce, some really beautiful like jasmine to put in their hair. We actually sprayed it with some perfume as well, so it smelled really nice. Um, so yeah, that was the wedding. We had our dinner afterwards. We actually cut our cake, our wedding cake, at our wedding dinner. This again was a super chilled out dinner. Everyone just sat, enjoyed the food, mingled, and basically went to bed afterwards, or like chilled by the lobby. So that was that day. That was probably the most full on day that we. We had and then the Saturday was the day of our reception. So this day is again where I wore a custom Ekta Solanki piece and it was stunning. It had feathers on it, it was blingy all over, it was just beautiful. And I actually had an interchanging skirt, so I had a skirt with like fully blinged with feathers, and then I could basically slip out of that skirt because my top was like a bodysuit and I could slip into like a really slinky kind of like floaty skirt. So that's what I did halfway through the reception. So for the reception, we actually had an amazing saxophonist come out and play the saxophone for all of our guests. He's actually on YouTube and his name is Graziato and he plays the most incredible saxophone. I have not heard a saxophone being played like that ever and as soon as I found him on YouTube I was like this guy is amazing. I wonder whether we could get him to play at our reception. So funnily enough, he's actually from Mexico. So we flew him out and we had him play for all of our guests at the Welcome Cocktails. So the Welcome Cocktails was something which was set up downstairs, um, the kind of ballroom area. So it's kind of near where we had our legal ceremony near the really lucky Mayan tree. So everyone had a few canapes, some drinks, and we had as our wedding guest book, we had a family tree where people would basically get their fingerprints and put their fingerprints all on our family tree so that is something that we are going to get framed and put up in our new house we are currently in the process of trying to find a new house so um that we're going to be using as like um a little reminder and a memory of our wedding um so that will be put up in our house and once um the kind of cocktail area was all done we had all of our guests come upstairs into the ballroom the ballroom was incredibly decorated because the wedding was so simple and the fiesta was so brightly colored and all the other events were really quite like laid back chilled out casual we wanted the reception to be super glamorous so we had this ribbon feature installed into the middle of the dance floor and in the middle of the room so there were all these beautiful ribbons um with like little I want to call them like little crystal pieces um, off of the odd like one here and there. So it kind of sparkled in the night. We had a black dance floor and the theme was kind of like black and silvers and greys and just like metal tones. And when we walked into that room, because we saw it before all of our other guests did, we were blown away. It was it turned out to be better than what we had imagined. And it just everything looked amazing. So everyone came up and um had a few more drinks and just like chilled out and sat down and then we did our entrances so we had my brother his wife and my nephews come first then we had my husband's two sisters and their husbands separately come and do their entrance and then we had both of our mums come in and do a little surprise dance and that was really cute people still go on about how cute they both looked because they're both really really tiny and just really like really cute they did this little dance they did it to gala jeshma and they wore black glasses and they were like raving it out um we missed that we could only watch that afterwards on the like um 
the video footage that we have. So they did theirs and then we did our entrance. So for our entrance, we came and did our entrance into the dance floor and did a little bit of a boogie. And then we basically went straight into our first dance because we didn't want to waste too much time. At the reception, we wanted everything to flow quite smoothly. So we did our first dance. We picked the song, Why I Love You, which is by Major. And as soon as we both heard this song, we were both like, this we just knew it was a song you know like sometimes when you know you know so that's the song that we picked and we did our dance we actually made up the moves like in an afternoon and we'd been practicing it for ages we just wanted it to be quite simple nothing too crazy no like too many spins or picking me up in the air or anything like that so once we were done with our first dance we basically all sat down we started having our food all the speeches started we had a surprise speech my cousin actually did a speech um which was a rap to fresh prince of bel-air but it was a story about how me and my husband met and it was honestly the best thing ever like I was just sh my face was shocked the whole time so we had that which was such an amazing surprise and then we I forgot to put my sitting spray on so once all of the speeches were done, we actually had uh, our speech. So we did a joint speech together as a husband and wife. Um, and once we had finished our speech, we actually had a surprise for all of our guests. So we sat back down and basically watched that same video that you guys watched on my channel, the two or three minute one. We all watched that as a big family together. And everyone's face was just like, because it was shot like so incredibly well, but they actually had clips of our reception in that video so they were in the back like office editing that whilst we were sitting and, and eating and doing our speeches so my husband did the voiceover of that like off the spot as he was eating he literally had food in his hands and in his mouth and the videographers took him away and said can you just say a few words about the wedding and it's like when you get caught off guard you know but he did that literally on that day it was so crazy to watch all of that it was like they call it the same day edit, but it was crazy to watch that entire week at the reception. It was just, it was something that we could not have um, imagined, but it was so beautiful and just so like amazing just watching it all happened. We had Envy on the decks. We had Graziato who would come out every now and again and play the saxophone live on top of songs. We actually took these like foam glow up sticks from here the uk we packed them in our bags and we took them with us um, and we took all of them out um and yeah we partied until like four o'clock in the morning it was a crazy night the reception was like the longest event that we had because it started from six and ended at four so it was a long 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 time a lot of people did end up leaving afterwards because it was quite a long day and with the jet lag and all of that but but yeah it ended up four o'clock in the morning and that kind of ended the whole week of celebrations so that was the saturday and then everyone had the sunday and half of monday and that was it that was the whole week done and on monday everyone basically went back home and it was kind of like a bittersweet thing because nobody wanted to leave we all wish we had extended our trips um but it was back to reality you had to go back home and like kind of start our next part of our journey so to speak so yeah we all left on the same plane we had a couple of people arrive a little bit later or a little bit earlier so they left a bit later and vice versa and some people actually extended their trip and like stayed in a different part of mexico um and kind of made like a longer holiday out of it but that monday was the day where majority of everyone got back on to that party plane and back on the way home so that was the full week of the wedding. I'm hoping I haven't forgotten to tell you guys anything. If I have, everything will be in like a condensed form in the info box below for you guys. I'm not gonna lie, just talking about it all over again, it's made me sad that it's all over because we spent like two years planning this. Like it consumed so much of our lives. We took secret trips to like Mexico and everything in that time. I just felt like I, I wanted everything to be such a secret for my family. It had to be a secret for you guys. So I am sorry about that, but I'm hoping that me just sharing these like story time chit chat videos with you guys about the wedding um, can make up for it. And obviously I've been posting loads of pictures on my Instagram about it. I still feel like I could post so many more pictures, but I just feel like I don't want to bombard you guys. <laughs> That in a nutshell is the kind of layout of our wedding and exactly what we had and what we did. I hope you guys did enjoy this. This kind of sets the scene for part two 
of the wedding video because the part two will be where I will be answering all of your guys' questions. So if you guys have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below because I will try and answer like the most popular ones, so to speak, because I have loads of my Instagram as well. But yeah, one thing I do want to mention actually, um, which I did forget to mention was I did change and switch a lot of things up for this wedding to make it easier for our guests to um, make it easier for us as a bride and groom and also to make a stand on certain things. So for example, um, I wanted my mum to do my kanyadan. So a kanyadan is where your mum and your dad give you away to your husband. So they literally put your hand in your husband's hand. Traditionally, uh, it's done by the dad and the mum. My dad passed away about 10 years ago, so it's only my mum. I know I've heard lots of nightmare stories about certain priests saying, nope, I cannot do this unless it's a couple. It has to be two people, X, Y, Z. And I was really, really, really kind of like, pushing my corner and I said I want my mum to give me away for my wedding. I'm her daughter, she has the right to give me away just because my dad's not here and I know for a fact my dad was so proud of my mum giving me away um, at the Ganya then, at the wedding, um, that yeah, that's one thing that I did that I stood my ground on. I know it can be a really touchy kind of area um, where like brides and grooms kind of speak out, not against people but do things how they want to do, but it is one of the biggest days of your life. like. You want to have good memories about it and I think one of the the happiest things for me was um, having my mum give me away. I think that was like a really, really, really like strong move to make from her end and I'm so glad she did it in the end Um, and yeah. I think that was the one thing that I really did want to touch upon. Um, If you do want to make changes to your wedding, honestly go for it because it will make you so much more happier and you'll just have the happiest memories of your wedding. Um, I've already thought of loads of things that I forgot to tell you guys, so it will be in the info box below. I hope you guys enjoyed this really long rambly video. I can't wait to get back to filming more videos. I will be doing um, like wedding videos, but this is part one and I'll just add loads of parts to it and then I'll probably do like um, a playlist so you can watch all of the wedding videos in like in one place. Um, So yeah, that is that. Like I said, um, anything that I've missed out and everything that I have spoken about will be in the info box below. And yeah, it's just amazing to be back and I'm so glad that I'm in a better mind frame and I'm just so glad to be um, back filming and editing for you guys because I really have missed it. So yeah, I'm pretty sure I've said this like 10 times already, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I shall see you all in my next one.